Hiya! This video is in response to one of Francis' video, but Francis John is probably never going to see this because, quite frankly, um, he is so many leagues above me, I have drowned and am beside the whale carcasses. He wanted to build a super simple, dumb Paku farm. I've been using this design for as long as I can remember, but I have to absolutely admit that I do not believe I've come up with this design. I don't remember where I saw it. It could have been from Francis himself, and he's forgot the video, and I've forgotten the video, or it could have just been a, a picture on the internet that I saw at one time, or whatever. But I've been using this since Paku and the automation systems were introduced with oxygen not included. Here's how it works. You had the fishies on this side, and these are your breeder fish. I usually have this much larger. I usually have 10 fish in here. When these fish drop an egg, this little critter sensor uh, picks it up. Now, way, way in the past, you wouldn't be able to tell if there was uh, an egg on the ground. So way, way, way long ago, you would use pressure sensors and I'm um, pretty sure that the egg set it off and then you could pick up the egg and move it around and put it down here and then there was other indirect ways to find out if there was fish there or you could manually set the uh, doors yourself so it'll pick up the egg move it up the conveyor and then drop it in this two tile room and the egg will sit there and mature for however long it takes eggs to mature. Now there's four Paku on this side, and the critter sensor says that, so this door is locked and this door is open. When this Paku hatches, it'll flop, 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 dunk into the water over here. Now when this Paku gets old and is about to die, he'll drop his egg, and the egg will be picked up by this conveyor and travel back and be dumped back into this two tile room here. Oops, that's the wrong button. This two tile room here. Now when this, when these Paku die off, and right now it's set to, uh, if it is above three, yeah, uh, below three, sorry. So if I say four, which means we'll want five in the, in the chamber, and we turn this on, this is what happens. So as soon as your chamber here is below the number of fish that you want, the door switch, this goes open, this goes closed, it waits for this guy, to hatch and then he'll flop 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 and fall down the likelihood that you'll have more than one fish falling down at once is very low even if you had um, hundreds of fish here it's it's not super high and as soon as the fish passes beyond this threshold uh, this thing will pick it up because this whole thing is a room and then uh, once it hatches and it falls in then the number of fish will go back to the uh, preset that you want, it'll lock, and then the fishies will fall down over here. So, uh, I have a bunch of algae. You don't need algae. You can change, uh, trade, yeah, you can train these guys up until they're domesticated, and then you don't need to feed them algae anymore. You can just feed them seeds, and they will uh, reproduce like gangbusters. These guys are not domesticated yet because I just spawned them. Yep, they're wild. All right, let's get rid of the dupes. Okay, dupe's gone. Go away. Get lost. Nobody loves you anyways. And then we will let these fishy do their thing, and we'll see what happens. Okay, now all the fishies. Let's turn off super speed here. All the fishies are tame. Let's transition them off of algae. Okay, now there's going to be no algae in the system. And let's uh, feed them these uh, these pitch of peppers. And we'll just infinitely duplicate this. Okay, I will take these seeds, we'll put them down here. There we go. And we'll copy um, 
a bunch more. Okay, we've got 3,000 seeds in there, so that's probably enough for the time being. We will clear all the selections off here. There, and we will. How many Paku? Four Paku still. Have they laid an egg yet? Oh, you are overcrowded for some reason. Uh, oh, they're overcrowded for a second because they laid an egg. So we have our first series of eggs. Now let's put super speed back on and we'll play this out until one of the fish dies. And they'll all die at the same time because I've spawned them all at the same time. And they have another 17 cycles to go. So let's wait for that. And they've all croaked. And now the door is opened on this side and it's ready to let them feed in. And there's a bunch of fish in there uh, incubating. There's quite a lot of them. I don't know how many is actually there. Not very many. And there's a bunch sitting there. There's 36 creatures uh, just in that little spot there. Maybe we'll put another one right there. And there are 12 eggs right there. So we'll wait for them to hatch. Four should hatch at the same time, because remember, the uh, Paku that were in here are all spawned at the same time, which is not normal. So they'll all hatch at the same time, and then they'll all flop over and fall into the pond. And here we go. And the fish are jumping onto that side. That's four fish, and it's locked and this side has, has opened up. Now let's pause. Now this is infinitely expandable. And I'll show you this, we'll destroy this. And we will, uh, how many spaces do these things go? So we can get up to here. Yeah. So let's build this out. There, now we have much uh, more room in this area, we'll put a couple of these guys on there. We'll expand this out a bit. We'll destroy that one. Move the picture, pimple, pimple picture, pip. We'll move the thing over here. So now we've set it up. So we have a little bit of a filter here and it'll drop off. It'll redirect fry eggs into this chamber here and then it'll spit everything else out here. We've also doubled the size of our pond very easily just by adding uh, to the side. We can also add more aging tanks this way just by setting up some simple um, automation and, and using the uh, conveyor the conveyor shutoff over here. And we can control how many eggs are in each one of these uh, one of these little kill ponds so we don't go over a set amount. But let's let's turn it on here. There. Now it's clearing out everything. Uh, let's just take off, take out all the iron, aluminum, and all we're left with is polluted dirt. We got a bunch of polluted dirt and uh, packet uh, paku fillets uh, sitting there. So let's actually filter this out a tiny bit more so we just made a few traps just to see what we catch and we have four kilograms of paku fillet some of that might have rotted because um, I don't know how many of these fish died probably not very many since we've just gone through one birth cycle one growth cycle and we have uh, quite a bit of dirt and now the second set of spawns Okay, it looks like 85 is the next one. 
and then we'll we'll see that they'll hop over as well. And here we go, the miracle of life, curse splash. So we have eight creatures in there. They're all happy, they're all tame, and they're all going to eat uh, this crud and create more eggs for us. Uh, now, what I said before is that we could have an infinite number here, and we can. All we need to do is just place these strategically, kind of like this, and then we put more doodads down here, and then we put more critter canners down here and over here. We link them up like this. Then we use a knot gate. Now, uh, yeah, we need to use a knot gate because we want to make sure that they're, if either one is on. So basically the knot gate is acting as an or gate. Like this. And then we'll say, uh, if it is above 10, or this is above 10. And then we'll just copy the settings over there. And that should open up the doors for each of these. Then we just take the track from this one, and we let it continue through like that. And then we do the exact same thing from here in here, but we've already like made a little bit of a, sp a spaghetti mess here. So basically, I'll see if I can't do it, despite the spaghetti. Copy these settings over onto here. And this will have a, I think I put it together wrong. Yes, I did. So what I forgot to do is I forgot to put the not gate in. There, and then that will automatically close and any more fish that come in through here will go out over here. Now, you're going to have to guesstimate how many you want, uh, how many fish you want in here and how many fish you want in reserve. Uh, we have eight fish in the pond, so we're probably looking at about 90 fish uh, in our aging pool and maybe uh, 10 eggs over here or, you know, balance it out to whatever you want. But that will basically mean, oh, I forgot to put water. Uh, that will basically mean that no one of these ponds will be too full. And you can just keep cycling through. Now, there is a tropical fish that is contaminated over here. But uh, we have set this to fry, so uh, no more tropical fish will come here. And then we just need to, like, have a load off where tropical or the cold fish offload in the other place. And we can make this as big as we want. You can make uh, the breeding tank from one side of the screen to the other. You can make this from one side of the screen. You can put this block uh, up on top or down below, just as long as it's got um, one part that's able to flop the fish over and fall into the sea. And this will work an infinitely long. Now, it says that it takes a thousand watts, but it's not actually using a thousand watts. Right now it's actually using no wattage whatsoever. And that's because none of the pieces need to work all at the same time. They only need to work in short bursts. So this can be powered from almost anything with a single battery and it'll work at an infinitely long time. And it is almost the simplest that this structure can be made. You don't even need the automation. You can manage this manually and lock and unlock these doors uh, manually and even have the ability for your duplicates to run through here 
before you get to the uh, to um, a higher logistics level. The conveyor rails are kind of necessary for this to work, but as long as you have, as long as you can clean up the uh, the fry that are down there, you can still do it manually, but you're still going to need rails. And that's that's the simplest thing. And again, I am almost certain that I didn't come up with this. I can't tell you where the influences came from. I can't remember. Again, it could be John, Francis John himself that I saw in one of his uh, one of his videos like five years ago. My God, he's been producing videos for a while now, and I've been watching them the whole time. Or it could have been like on the clay site or something like that. Or I might have seen somebody else's design and adapted it a little. Like I know for a fact that. Uh, this, this, uh, daisy chaining is not my design. This is actually Francis John's design. Just changed a tiny bit to have, uh, have the, the single, uh, rail go through. But that's like, like anybody can figure that out. That's not special. Uh, but like the, the tank design here and other things, usually I make the tank a lot shorter and a little more wider because the closer the fish are to the food, the quicker they will swim up and eat it. Uh, and the quicker they'll produce an egg. But all of that is just bits and pieces that have been sort of strewn together over the years. I don't know who to give credit to. Um, if you came up with this design before, like, 2016 or something, like, right at the beginning, then you are the one who did it, and I copied off of you, and I'm sorry for not giving you credit. Anyways, that's the design. I'm finished. I'm done rambling and blathering on and being a fool and I will see you later.